Hi, thank you for joining me. Today's short video tries to deal with a problem that many of us amateur radio enthusiasts experience on a daily basis. The enemy of amateur radio signals is interference. The higher the interference, the less chance of us hearing those weak, distant signals. So what causes this interference? Okay, so part of it could be atmospherics, stuff that's just going on in the atmosphere that we've got absolutely no control over. However, a big part of the interference that we have to overcome is man-made. And this is the difference between what we amateurs refer to as QRN, N being natural, or QRM, M being man-made. So man-made noise. So what's making this noise? In our homes and in our streets, we've got things that can cause noise. Power lines, these cause noise. Electric fences, cattle fences, these cause noise. But also a little bit closer to home, many street lights are now being converted to LED because they save energy, which is great. But the downside is these can be quite noisy. When I say noisy, you can't hear them. So you can't walk down the street and notice that they're making a noise. But when you switch on an amateur radio, especially an amateur radio with a display, you can actually see the noise. Christmas tree lights, cheap Chinese wall power adapters. These are notorious for causing loads of noise. So anyway, the whole purpose of this video is I've just purchased a device that claims to overcome, or even to use the word that they use, eliminate QRM. Okay, that's interesting. So I ordered it, got it from eBay, it's arrived, and now I would like to show you, number one, what it is, and number two, answer the question. Really? Does it work? Okay, so I ordered it from eBay, and it arrived in just a couple of days, in actual fact. So clearly kept in stock in the UK. Came in this uh, brown box, uh, a list of contents, which tells me exactly what to expect inside, and then several bubble wrapped parcels. This is um, a bag of two cables, a power lead, and a cable with a couple of RCA plugs for the PTT. We'll go over that in just a second. In this little bag, this was quite interesting. I wasn't expecting this to be included, but basically it's just a little telescopic aerial. Now, they ship this so that you can use this as the auxiliary or sensing aerial. Again, we'll come to that in a, in a few moments. Let's just move this out of the way and let's have a look at what's underneath. Okay, it's a little packet and it's got three adapters in it. And the adapters are PL259 to SMA. So they're clearly for connecting the antennas. Let's have a quick look at the actual QRM eliminator box. Okay, first, uh, first thought, it actually feels quality, to be honest. Uh, it's got a nice kind of brushed aluminium type feel. Three SO239 connectors an RCA connector for the PTT, and also a power socket. On the front there's a nice stainless steel illuminated on-off button, a power light, a TX light, and three rotary knobs. On the back there's the two antenna sockets and also the auxiliary sensing antenna socket, which I've got the little telescopic aerial plugged into at the moment, and also the PTT cable. The PTT cable is important because it basically turns off the receive when you're transmitting, so therefore you don't end up blowing up the receive circuit. So anyway, I've got this plugged into the flex, and this is on my 40 80 meter loaded dipole. So the whole idea of this is to show you the effect that this box has. So straight away, I've just turned it on, and now I'm going to start to move the knobs around. The knobs basically are designed as a gain knob for the sensing antenna, a gain knob for the main antenna, and then a phase reversal knob so you can actually cancel out any 
any noise. So you can see here by me turning the knobs I'm having a, a different effect. And also what you can actually see at the top of the screen on the flex, you can actually see the power meter. Now I think it doesn't take a lot to work out that by turning the game number one knob all the way to the left, you're literally going to end up with no signal because all it's doing is attenuating out your signal. By turning the middle knob, the gain 2 knob, all the way to the left, then again you're just going to be turning off any abilities that this actually offers. So it's a juggling act and it really is a case of messing around with the knobs together, not individually, but turn one and then turn the other one and then turn the previous one back a bit and just find the best position. Now here I think is a really good example because I've got all of the knobs working in such a way that the noise has become very, very minimal. Fair enough, it's actually attenuating the incoming signal quite a lot, but you can actually hear that there's a lot less noise and the audio of the transmitting station is a lot more um, understandable. Watch this. Know how you're, uh, your okay. So that's off. So that's before I bought the box. And that's on. Now you could argue, well, all you've done, Mike, is attenuate the signal down. And yeah, I agree with that. You know, it's gone down from something like an S9 to an S4 or 5. But I do feel that the audio against the noise is a lot clearer. So when you turn the box off, the signal increases by a, a magnitude of maybe 20. And also the, the strength of the received station increases also. But I think this is a lot nicer to listen to than that. So, although I haven't necessarily got any real QRM to speak of to try it against, I think when you actually turn it on and off, you can, you can definitely see and hear the difference. And then the wind suddenly got up, um, but then it, was, it wasn't actually as cold as what I thought it was going to be. I hadn't planned to do anything out all today, um, but it, it was actually a lot milder. Having a scope really does enable you to see the signals. Basically the whole day in the garden, putting together and doing all the cabling for another antenna on my, um, on my mask at the side. You know the, uh, you know the one that supports the, uh, the top band inverted L? I don't know. I'd love to hear your opinions. I'm sure some people will say that, Mike, all you're doing is attenuating the signal, noise and the wanted signal are going down four or five S points. So that was on 40 meters. 80 meters is exactly the same for me. You know, 80 meters is kind of an unusable band because there just is so much noise. But I don't know, I, I just get the feeling that this is actually making it a bit more usable. To me, those signals look like they're standing out a lot more against the noise. And signal to noise ratio is the key. That's what it is all about. And um, I have got a feeling that my transmitted signal is much better than my receiving.
I actually did get to a stage uh, a few weeks ago where I was actually receiving the station through an SDR um, 40 miles away, but transmitting to them from here, just because the receiving SDR had a lot quieter and lower noise floor. In a minute I'll switch it off and you'll see what the noise floor is here. And it's, it's S9 most of the time. On 80 meters. Yeah, this guy's talking about noise as well. Now watch this. I think that sounds just so much better, personally. I'm sold on this. I really, really do think that this works. And I'm really looking forward to spending a lot more time playing with this. I'm enjoying HF more because 1480 were um, kind of a pain with all of the, uh, the noise, to be honest. So, yeah, I'm happy that this does the job that it's supposed to do. But, again, I'll be really interested to hear your stories and, uh, and hear your, uh, your opinion as far as this video is concerned. I don't think it's got a conclusion. I'm simply saying from my point, I'm happy with the £50 I spent on this. I'm using a Flex 6300 by the way. Um, this is the um, version 3 of the uh, smart SDR software that it runs. Just in case anyone is interested. I do quite a few live streams as well and I think you're going to be seeing this uh, QRM Eliminator appearing more and more in my live streams. I've purposefully left it without a conclusion because I'll leave you to make your own mind up. I think it's okay. Um, I didn't have a huge amount of QRM to try and eliminate. Um, I think the problem with me is just generally I've just got a noisy station. So anyway, yeah, I'll leave it to you to make your own mind up. From my point of view, I'm going to be keeping it. I'm looking forward to using it over the forthcoming months. And maybe I'll do a follow-up video. So there you go. Hopefully, as I say, you have enjoyed the video. And if you have, please go ahead, give us the little thumbs up um, button. Because, yeah, that shows us that we've done a good job. Um, and also... If you do like videos like this, then maybe you'd like to consider subscribing and checking out the other videos. You'll see links to some of them at the end of this. So, take care. Thanks for watching. 7-3. Bye-bye.